Good morning and welcome to the next part of my Castles of the Loire, the Chateau de la Loire. Where am I this morning on this cold winter's morning? I'm here in the village of Montresor. Just that way is a Renaissance castle. Right next to it is an 11th century castle. I'm going to be photographing both of them this morning. It's a beautiful morning, yep, a little bit nippy. It's a very, very easy shot. And what I want to do with this series is just basically take you around the castles of the Loire Valley, showing you why it is that this place is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, more officially known as the Val de Loire. What you're looking at right now is the Renaissance castle, very kind of typical of the castles that are here, the style. So you have this castle here, this Renaissance castle, and then just this side of it, over that side, is the the old much much older castle so there is a shot that i saw of it walking to this particular place it's not actually that difficult to get to you can quickly park off the edge of the road and then get here now what i've done at the moment is there's my 2470 on the front of the camera and yes there's probably going to be a little bit of converging verticals but that's okay it's it's nothing too big it's nothing too major because of the angle of it and uh, where the sunrise is coming up, it's a beautiful pink dawn that's coming up at the moment, certainly more towards where this actual sunrise is. Um, I'm having to do a little bit of a blend, but that's okay. I'd rather do a blend than be using a grad. A grad would cut in into the trees there. Then as far as sort of the orientation of the image, what I would do here, for example, and this is what I want to do with this series to show you how I'm going to to photograph them of going in, in in landscape mode but you can of course do it in in portrait mode so you've got the entire reflection in the river there now do you need all of the reflection of the castle i think that comes down to you and what it is that you want to achieve with your imagery you can see a lot of the leaves have gone on the trees that's not so much of a problem i'm not really worried about that could i go wider i could go wider would it really work I think things would get lost. When you have a castle on the hill like that, a majestic castle, I think it's better to go into it, get into it, and like, for example, photographing a mountain, show it as big, as bold and beautiful as it is. So that's castle number one, part of the same castle, the earlier part. I'm gonna photograph in a minute, I'll show you that. But yeah, definitely, this is the main castle that you're gonna be looking at here in Mon Trésor, basically, my treasure. Now when you come to Montresor, you're basically getting two for the price of one. The Renaissance castle and the one next to it, a lot older. Now the one that's next to it, the older one, you can get a kind of a shot and I'm looking at it and thinking, you know what, it's, it's not bad, it's okay. However, I kind of find it's a little bit cluttered in some respect with trying to get a photograph off it that it's actually probably better to be up high somewhere. And yes, you could maybe get away with a drain, but here you're not likely to be able to get the authorization unless maybe you ask the town hall. But um, I'm not going to bother putting up a drain this morning. I don't, and certainly with what's going on at the moment, it's just too risky to mess about with uh, any police that might happen to turn up. So what I've done is I'm just doing a very simple shot. I'm looking towards the older castle. I've got my long lens on. It's about 135 mil looking at the castle. As I said in the previous segment, using a long focal length to compress things together to get, make them look as bold and as beautiful as they are against the landscape that's there. There's not really much in the foreground. Okay, it's a little bit frosty this morning. However, the issue that I've got with the foreground is there's lots of stuff there that's just not very interesting. And I kind of feel at times when you're looking at an old castle like this, the best thing to do is try to include things that are sympathetic to the castle rather than actually taking away from the castle and, and just, you know, just detracting from, the, from it, the main image itself. Let me show you though the, the bigger castle the older castle as well, it is bigger and older than the other castle. There is the older castle of Montresor there, you can see it's it's not too bad, it looks a bit, I guess, 
you know, it's under repair at the moment. You can see there's, maybe you can see, or you certainly see in the final image, there's some scaffolding up there. Thankfully, not a lot. Um, but in this case, the Renaissance Castle is a lot nicer um, than that one there. I guess it depends on your taste, but um, do I like older castles? Absolutely, but that one, ah, you know what, it's okay. I think the problem here is the angle that you can get on it, the only angle that you can really get. Because it's on a defensive hill, we are down. We kind of need to be up to get a really good shot of that castle. What can you do? Ah, you know, there's not a lot you can do, but just admire what it is that you've got there. I think what I'm going to do is I may, maybe I'll hang around just to see if I can get a bit more light on it. It certainly looks starting to look really nice. Although the first colours of the day, they're, they're pretty much gone now. That beautiful pink that was in the sky. But there you go, about 135 mil or so. And it's just why you need a long lens on a, on a shot like this. There's too much, too much nonsense in the foreground that just would not work at all. Let's go on to castle number two. Castle number two. I've come to a place called Brie Doré and on the top of the hill where the village is, because I'm actually just outside of the village, is the Chateau de Brie Doré. Beautiful old 14th to 15th century castle. Apparently it's very unique in France because the defences are still intact. It looks really nice. Why have I come here? Why am I not right up at the castle? At this time of day, it's actually better to be here looking from the southwest towards the northeast. The sun is over that direction there and is beaming a light onto the castle. If you want to get this side of the castle, you're gonna to have to be here in the afternoon. You can get right up to it, it's right up by the road. From here though, you have to do a very long lens shot. It's over 200 millimeters. It's okay if you're on a crop sensor, but from here, if you're on a full frame sensor, you're gonna need a 100 to 400 lens to get up to the castle. Now I'm not going to explain the back of the camera just because it's quite a simple shot to do. You can either do it either landscape orientation or I'm thinking it's probably better to actually do it in portrait orientation just because you've got this huge keep that's in the middle of the castle itself that's just going right up there and I think it will look a lot better in uh, portrait orientation. I'm going to do one more castle and then I'm going to go uh, and do another vlog actually for the next part of my castles in the Loire Valley. And one of the things I want to say to you is if people are going to say, how many are you actually going to do? Well, in the department of Andre et Loire, where I live, there's 144 castles. Now there's only about a third of those are accessible to us, the public, from a, a reasonable sort of place to get to. So like here, I'm on public property, I'm on a path that I can get to, that I can look up to the castle. But there's a lot of them that are behind high walls and, and all sorts of woodland and things, and you just can't get to them. And some of them may be open to the public at certain times of the year, but a lot of them, they're just private property. You can't get to them. So I think, as I said, I think it's about a third or so that you can really get to. But anyway, enough waffle. Let's get to castle number three, the last castle in this vlog, and then we'll go and do something else. And here's the final castle in the Chateau de la Loire that I'm going to show you today. This is a place called Chateau de Lyon, the Castle of Lions. It's a circa 14th century castle. You can see it's just basically sat on a hill, overlooks a beautiful village, and also there's a really nice abbey that's in the village as well. So this is definitely somewhere to come, definitely somewhere to put on your list to just come and visit. I'm not sure if you can visit the castle itself. I don't know but uh, there's an information board that's just by the entrance to the castle. I'm sure that will tell, tell you everything that you need to know about this place. How am I capturing it photographically? Well, I'll, I'll show you on the back of my camera what it is that I'm doing, and then I'll wrap up on this particular episode of Chateau de la Loire.
On the front of my camera is a 24mm tilt shift lens just because of the angle you're looking at the car. So if I was to take off the shifts right now, you'd be doing something such as this. Huge amount of converging verticals. So this is why I use tilt shift lens a lot to be able to get these things looking really nice, to get them looking as nice and as good as they should be. If I just level that back off, and then you'll see if I shift up, you'll see exactly why it is that I'm using tilt shift lenses. And there it is there. Now the other thing, if you can see the histogram there, the overall histogram, is that you're gonna have to do a bit of a blend. As I've said in the previous one, a lot of these castles here, you can see this is a morning shot at the moment. You could do this pretty much any time of the day, because where the sun is illuminating this outbuilding here, it's just overexposing big time. So you're just going to have to take multiple exposures in order to get the, the dynamic range of the thing. But hey, you know, sometimes it's just what it is that you have to do. But there you go. Beautiful, beautiful Chateau de Lyon. There you go, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, quick look at some of the castles here in the Loire Valley, the Chateau de Lyon, the Chateau de Brie Doré, and then also in Montresor, first thing this morning, with the beautiful dawn light that was there on the castle. As you can see, there are so many castles here to explore, and overall in France, there's about 6,000 or so castles from through the ages from relatively new in the last couple of hundred years, right back to the Middle Ages, and even further than that so there's so much to see so much to do you could spend a lifetime trying to do it and you'll never cover all of it but uh, we're going to give it a good shot but as i said here in the loire valley you've probably got about 144 i think it is castles through the ages some ruined some still intact some you can't even visit at all in any case i hope you've enjoyed what it is that you've seen today if you have don't forget to click subscribe down there if you haven't already and click up there that notification bell for when I'm uploading new stuff which at the moment is twice a week. I'm off now to film Thursday's vlog another Chateau de la Loire and then over the coming week I'm also going to be filming four more vlogs just actually because I have to go to the United Kingdom for family reasons which is an unfortunate thing that's happened but um, in any case hopefully you've enjoyed this vlog Stay safe and see you again soon in France.